Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be working on the Grand Sport. Now, what you're going to see is I already started this video, and I got to give some disclaimers because it's probably going to be all over the place. I'm just being honest with you. Um, we lost some footage. I had another video that I mentioned that some footage got lost. It was just an accident. And so that's this is one of them. This is one of the videos that we, we lost some footage for. So you're going to notice that it jumps around a little bit. And, uh, and yeah, it's just, it's just a little jumpy. But we're still going to get into it. Today we are going to pin and replace the harmonic balancer on this Grand Sport because the, the uh, harmonic balancer is really, really bad. So <laughs> it's got to be done. We're going to get into it right now. Today, we got the Corvette in the garage. Now, we inherited this uh, from my dad and uh, obviously pretty sentimental, um, but one of the things it needed from the get-go was the harmonic balancer. Today, we're gonna tackle that. It did need a few things. We did brakes and a couple other things, just normal maintenance stuff, but the typical harmonic balancers issues that the LS motors have, this one has. Hit wobbles real good, popped off the AC belt on its own, and uh, so we got to fix that. So we got some goodies here to pop on it, and we're just gonna get get to get into it. I uh, I should have probably watched a YouTube video or something about it because I heard that it's it's not like a super easy job. I think it's pretty in depth. I think you got to pull the rack out and lots of fun stuff. I don't know. Should we pull the hood? We we're debating about that. Obviously, by the time you guys comment on this video about whether or not we should, we've already done it. But uh, that's the stuff we're looking at right now. We've elected to pull the hood because um, it's just not that difficult whether you need to or not. We don't really know, but I fig we figured that makes getting everything out of here way easier. Um, the flip-up hood is cool looking. Probably gives you some advantages somewhere, but I can tell you that for actually working on anything, not, not the best. best. Not <laughs> not the best. So we have never done this. Kind of like I was saying, we, we probably should have watched some instructional video of what people do here. But we are thinking that we are going to remove everything up here. I think you could maybe do it with leaving the radiator and stuff in. The power steering rack has to come out. I mean, you can see how tight it is against the harmonic balancer there. So it has to come out no matter what. I don't see any way around that. But we are thinking that we want to be able to use an impact on it. So, <laughs> so I think we're just going to pull everything out. It's not that big of a job to get that stuff out. So I think we'll do it, and then we'll have easy access once we get the rack out. The rack's going to also be a little bit of a project. But that's actually probably the biggest thing, really, and the balancer itself. So we're jumping forward, and this is the section right before this that got deleted from the video. Um, so I'm going to show you where we are. Yeah, it's, we didn't lose that much, but we definitely lost some footage here. Looking underneath here, we already got radiator, AC condenser, all that stuff, everything except this shroud out. We are kind of at the point now where we are going to start to pull the steering rack. Now it does have a ton of lines, um, you know, running into it more than, more than seems necessary. Cause there's like, I guess it's just probably running into the cooler as well but uh two up top there and then got to pull it off the ends here i don't know maybe it'll slide out so i'm not exactly sure what the process is here to remove it but we'll figure that out as we go and uh, everything else is is kind of out of the way and then we'll have access to the crank we have both tie rods off on the outer end we think we're going to pull the inside right now wow that's no light at all Right now, because of the addition, we don't have any light over on this side. Some people use the proper inner tie rod tool. Pipe wrenches work pretty good most of the time. If it extends out far enough, they're the, they're the thing you want. smash my thumb that happens you'll have that on them big jobs all right, all right. 
right, wheel the other way. And we'll have to switch this guy out anyway, because this is the... Oh, yeah, this is the one. We got a new boot, which, by the way... Way more expensive. $60 from GM. They make some universal ones, and I didn't really want to get one of those. I want to get the right thing, because we do everything classy. And $60 from GM. Go ahead and see if you can... Here, actually. Hold the camera for a sec. Let me just try one thing here. Not that I necessarily expect it to work. I just want to... See. I'm just saying there, I'm accessing the crank fully. I, I yeah. don't think it's enough room to actually get it all. pull it, but I'm just saying I get... I can yeah. get it up that far to at least get the nut, I mean, the bolt off. And stuff. Let's look at how that made like made everything over here kind of look. Um, just if, yeah, it's not bad. Kind of wiggle it out, you know, between like. Oh, well, we could try. Maybe ratchet strap it up a little bit, and you know. Yeah, just if we got if the lines get a little, because like it should turn. I'm trying to think what it's connected to right now. That's not steering. You know, to the... No, yeah, I know that. That should turn. <laughs> the... The, like, the lines that are going from up here at the pump to out here are are, are part of the same piece, so they're not going to flex. Right. You know, like, like, they're just coming along for the ride. So it's just the ones underneath. I'll tell you what, man. I think we got it, honestly. I, I would want, like to get this freaking thing out. I don't know how you do it. You but. can't, like, without removing a ton of stuff. I think I think we just work from the bottom. I think if I go down, you know, I can see a straight shot into the yeah. crank pulley. Yep. All right. Okay. So we are ready. We're going to try to pull the crank bolt. Now, those tend to be very, very tight. We got the Milwaukee charged up, and we bought a weighted socket. Um, I've never used a weighted socket before, but people rave about them for heavier stuff. Didn't really even know it was a thing until about two years ago or something. So we're hoping there, there is some other ones. Ingersoll Rand makes some really cool ones. I got a huge ring on the outside. This is just, as you can see, a beastie, beastie socket. So I'm going to hand this down to Lance here. And we're going to give it a shot. Yeah, we're going to put her on the highest setting. It's on, it's on three. So, I mean, you can do it. changes all the way to the freaking impact. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put her in right about there. I got a view, yeah. kind of. Just for access. I, I can get that straight on. Okay. Okay. But the tail of this was the wrong direction. There we go. I had to find a place to get the actual wrench. I'll tell you what, I might let you run it. Squeeze that if you can. All right. Not bad. Don't know what it would have been like without. <laughs> There you go. We should have tried it probably the first time without it to Just see. Curiosity. But I think we'll use the socket again, so it's not that. Right, but it makes the impact wildly heavy. Now, we, before we pull this thing, we do want to show you that this had a little bit of wobble on it. Oh, it's coming. It really isn't very tight at this point. That's why I thought it might get a little shake out of it, but it's all good if we don't. Try to drop that in my face. Here we go. She was shot. We got all of our goodies set up here. Got the pinning kit. We are going to pin this crank so that the this like we don't have any issues in the future. That doesn't fix the delaminating thing, but it keeps it from spinning because they are just pressed on. Here's our old junk one. Here is our new power bond one. There's ARP is good. Power bond's fine, as far as I know. At least I really hope so. But uh, shouldn't have any issues in the future with this guy here. New ARP bolt, new belt, and uh, yeah, pin kit. All right. So we have never pinned uh, pinned a crank before. Didn't even really, you know, we, uh, we don't know what we're doing. That's the point of this video. But we are going to try it out. I think we'll be all right with this with this kit here. Squeeze some of that in there, and I'm probably going to work it around. You know? I think that's a good idea. I'm just, uh, I'm not so sure that I was supposed to lube the actual thing. <laughs> I'm just thinking Well, about it that. was going to get lube on it either way. Now, guys, 
I know we're using a ratchet, but we will probably maybe use a torque wrench on this one so that it's the correct specs, okay? Maybe. That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't think it's gonna catch anything. It doesn't, so this is the wrong bolt. Yeah, it's the correct one according to everything, but... Not for this car. What part number is it? Yeah, we can check that against. Well, no, it's not the right bolt. I know that. LS1, LS6. What's this thing? It's an LS3. We are now 17 days long into this project. Has it been 17? Seven. Yeah, feels like well, 17. seventeen. Yeah, today's it's it's been way too long, but we got we got the stuff that we need. Longer ARP crank bolt that should work. That's not a big deal. Um, what we had to do that was you know I got to give Lance some credit here because they do not make this kit. They make a bolt for it, but we didn't want to wait for it to be shipped and all of those things that go along with that. So we got a piece of threaded rod and did it because they don't make a bolt long enough for what we needed that is in any of the hardware stores around here maybe like a fastenal or something like that but, didn't have it before oh you check Ohio was the closest so there you go fastenal didn't have it so there it doesn't exist then basically without special ordering it and we needed it quickly so threaded rod he came up with that idea and we'll double nut it and then basically all you got to do is you drill into these just two holes or you just do the you one just use the one yeah you just use the one okay with the yep. collar on it yep, or the collar so you don't um, oh i should have wide angle that you so don't <laughs> read it out okay all it, right it so helps, the, yeah helps okay helps straight. So, okay oh i was gonna say i'm not sure which side of that thing you're supposed to use i did the side with the bump i think out towards us like the purple you know the the no the bump goes in in the recess the bump goes in the recess. I think I did it backwards. I flipped it. Oh, you flipped it. Okay. Yeah, yeah I already flipped it. I think that's it, man. She's in. Good. Okay. Not that difficult. No. When people talked about pinning originally, I didn't really know what they were talking about, and I thought maybe there was more involved, but that's not bad at all. <laughs> yeah. All right. Got enough threads? She started. Okay. What size do you say this is? 12 point something? It's right here. Inch and... Inch to sixteenth. Fits real nice. Nice. Alright. Now we just need the old big torque wrench and this gets torqued to 235 pounds. Alright. We do have the Pittsburgh three-quarter inch, which we did not own. We had to borrow this one. And adapter's right there. Adapter. No. Strong size. We got our beastie three quarter inch. We got our adapter, which we had to go actually get another adapter because we grabbed the wrong adapter. The adapter didn't adapt. It was the problem. And we are immediately are you in the turning over the engine? Okay. So, what's going to have to happen now is um, I got to say this delicately here. Only one of us can fit between the door and the lift. So, Lance I'm sure we both can. I can go do that. <laughs> no, you just do it. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Think, okay. Yeah. So Lance is going to stay out here and torque it down, and I'm going to try to film from inside. You want to um, do that? And then we'll get the imaginary click whenever that happens. Okay. That sounds like a click to me. This project has been just terrible with wrong parts. We had the wrong belt. Um, this has the dry sump because it's a Grand Sport. They have tons of belts marked like they're for a Grand Sport on parts websites. We actually have to find the one that's uh, like three quarters of an inch longer or it will not fit. So we had to run out, get that, 
now I think we are at the point where everything is torqued back there. We wanted to put the belt on first because it is a son of a gun actually to get it back in there. Um, yeah, I think we are ready to like go back together now. So we're going to release this steering um, rack here, I believe, next. And then basically we want to do the opposite of everything we did to take the things apart. Keep going. Your light? No. You're tight. I can push the shield out of the way a little bit for you. Okay. Here she comes. Okay, hold on a second. Okay. 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 Get this wire. Okay. Clear on that. I'm kind of holding it just a little bit. Yeah, I'm trying to get my hands down a little bit further. Probably the easiest one. Let me, let me get over there. Yeah, look. actually, yeah, that's oh. close. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> This guy, there we go. Got it. We're about in. We now got tie rods hooked up, we got tires on. Uh, we are just going to have to throw on the serpentine belt. We already got the AC belt on, so that's good. So serpentine can go on. We got a refill power steering fluid. We actually already filled the tranny fluid, and uh, which I didn't realize that these actually use automatic tranny fluid in it instead of just like gear oil for the manual, but they do. So it's filled with the Dextron, and then we actually changed the diff fluid as well just while we were back there. I'm gonna go something like that. This guy here doesn't matter for the moment, I don't think. And our final step of the puzzle, other than hood, coolant, and topping off with oil, uh, is the intake. We're gonna put her in there, and I gotta yell at GM on one thing. They do a great job with Corvettes. The fact that this little plastic piece right here is what holds in <laughs> the radiator is just kind of wild to me. I guess it works, so it hasn't broken free yet. So, But it, uh, I was a little surprised when that was the only thing, just little Dollar Tree plastic. Nice hands. Yeah, I know. I probably should have washed it before it's messed up. I think we're okay. Yeah, come on, let's go right there. Do you guys have any idea the type of skill it takes to do this one-handed without a funnel while holding a camera? All right, it doesn't take that much skill, like, it, but it, it's still, I didn't think, I thought I was going to spill it everywhere, so. And I even bought, we did Dexcool and distilled water, which is something, yeah, it's the right coolant, the right water, not just out of the hose outside. One thing we did do off camera as well is new battery. Uh, the battery was getting real weak on this. Biggest issue was is these drop the windows when the battery gets low and we kept coming out like it would actually still start and be okay but i think just like as soon as it drops any voltage at all it does that so that you don't like have your windows you know locking inside and <laughs> uh we come out and we're like why are the windows down again and then eventually we figured out that just battery was getting a little low all right we have oil pressure that is important. While this is getting up to temp and cycling all the fluids, all that good stuff, I'm gonna take it up a little bit because our front splitter, well, the front bumper needs repainted. That's a big thing, but the front splitter's really bad. So, I we have a new one. I'm gonna pop it on quick. They have a variety of fasteners down here. There we got like a, uh, I don't know, 3 8 bolt, and then we got Phillips, and then all the other ones were the old seven millimeters, which should be down here. But uh, yeah, they did some, they did some work down here. Well, the new splitter is sitting out here because it came basically crushed, as they do. 
from China. And usually when you set them out in the sun, they'll kind of like flatten out. I don't know that that's really going to happen here. I might have to get the heat gun to it, but I'm not going to put that on right now. Uh, but I do want to get this off the lift. Everything, I've coolant's burped. It's good to go. Power steering seems good. I just want to let it sit for a little bit here. I'm going to shut it off, let it sit so I can check the oil. I think we're in business. Let's see here. Let me wipe that off. Very professionally, I might add. And we're perfect, basically. So, I'm happy with that. Shouldn't blow it up due to low oil. At least not today. And now we get to do the fun part of unwrapping it. Now I plan to take this out and wash it because it is disgustingly filthy. It really, it really is. But it's pouring down rain outside, so I don't see a point in that. But let's go for a little drive, make sure everything's operating all right. Not gonna go crazy, but uh, just wanna take it out for a little test. expected but um, yeah my steering is off so that's something we'll have to get taken care of I am excited to say the Corvette seems to be working just like it should, other than we got to get that alignment done. I also noticed that the windshield wipers are starting to come apart, um, so need some new wipers. But it's drivable. Thank goodness we got that terrible, terrible harmonic balancer out of there. Hopefully we never have an issue again with that. We'll be out and able to you know, actually enjoy it this summer, because last summer we knew it was, we knew it was going bad, so we kind of didn't drive it, which... As you can see, it was a good good thing that we didn't. But uh, nice to get a few of those things taken care of. Appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys following along. Have a great day.